What's up, fellas? We hit 2,600 degrees today in under 20 minutes. That's a new record. I uh, usually can't get that hot that quick. We're melting some anode sludge today. Very difficult task. That's about 1,427 degrees Celsius. So let's check this out. Okay, we have 60.4 grams of anode mud. And because the electrolysis process that we used was so thorough and, and clean and used such a low voltage, very little copper, if any, is in this anode sludge. So, also this was leached. This is some leached residue. In addition to that, the leach um, effluent was green. Uh, we didn't really see any hues of blue in there whatsoever. And I believe that's indicative of a nickel content. Copper would have made it a bluish green, but I think it was green. I'll double check to be sure. So we're gonna throw this into a crucible. It is completely void of copper almost entirely. Mostly gonna be tin. Now, when you first start reading about this stuff and uh, experimenting with it and even producing it, one is led to believe this is 100% metal. Anode sludge, in fact, is not 100% metal. One of the things that takes place is if the oxygen content of your anode material, for instance, this here, these are some anodes that I made. This is e-waste smelted down. If the oxygen content of this metal is very high, above 200 parts per million, you get uh, an extremely large amount of um, tin oxide and things like that lead oxide and the oxygen comes from the trapped oxygen and, or the oxygen absorbed in the metal itself so we're probably only going to get uh, a couple of grams of metal out of this because there's no copper in it for instance um, I seen a guy do a batch of 200 grams and only got 1.6 grams of precious metal out of 200 grams. That was Jason at uh, Mountain Baker or something mining and metals or something. I can't remember the name of his channel. But um, I also experienced the same thing. And uh, I only got about uh, 3.5 grams of metal, I think it was, out of 100 grams of anode mud. But our anode mud has a far lower copper content than his did. And as far as precious metal, um, out of 100 grams, well, actually, I haven't processed it all, to be honest. There's the, so out of 100 grams, that's my precious metal bead. That's what did not dissolve in this nitric acid. The green color is telling us that we had some nickel. It bubbled and fizzed for a while but then it stopped. It does almost look like it's got a little bit of a gold color to it, but that just could be the light. I'm gonna let that soak a little longer. All right, fellas, I just noticed I'm ready for some foundry maintenance here. I've got a big puddle of molten slag on the floor there, and there's like a, a one inch stalagmite formed on the bottom right in the way of my flame. That's why it's kind of blasting out the nozzle there. I'm going to try and stab it out of there while this is running, but nonetheless, I still think we're going to hit 2,600 degrees, no problem today, because we're busting out the big guns. I got this massive 30 gallon, 180 PSI air compressor, and we're going to be running at 130 PSI's back pressure. I usually run at only 75 PSI's back pressure. See here, we got two uh, water separators to get the water out of that air, and uh, a little bit of oil leak looks like maybe. That ain't good. But uh, one of the most important things to get in this hot is a very robust air drying system. You can see here we've got a huge inline dryer with a desiccant canister. And we're finally up to temp here. Despite that, all that crap being in the way, look at all that slag that melted in here. There's still a little piece in the way there that I can't get. I'm just gonna have to clean this thing out another day. Okay, so these temperature gauges are a little hard to read if you're not familiar with them. Even though it looks like it says 260 degrees on the bottom, 
That little tiny zero is actually counted when you're going up above a thousand degrees. So that was actually 2,600 degrees there. Oh, that's hot. That is some hot stuff. Sit on. I added one of my secret ingredients this time. And when I stirred it with that rod, it started to foam up like a soda, a can of soda. You can see we got some green nickel oxide action going on there. I think it's hotter than death. I'm half tempted to set it back in the um, foundry. I think I'm going to do that so it don't break on me. Okay, Basil. So, I did a little looking into it and Jason did not use a collector metal when he melted his anode sludge. So, just to stay as close to his little test as possible, I did not add a collector metal to this either. This is the uh, shiny little button we got. It's quite heavy. It is very dense for its size. I'd almost say it's probably over a gram even though it's that small. So that's what we got this time. I believe this was 60 grams of anode mud. Remember this is a different constituent. The first portion, the first 100 some grams we melted was the stuff that fell out of uh, solution immediately, the stuff that settled immediately. This next batch that we melted was the stuff that had a suspension residence time of several hours, some even days. It's got a nice shine to it. It could just be some silica action. But uh, we'll go ahead and coupel this and see what we end up with. So 60 some grams of anode mud gives us 1.2 grams of metal. Okay, Basil, this is uh, the video me and you discussed. This is from Jason. Um, and the reason why his pyramid cone is coming out bigger than ours is because our electrolysis process is a little bit more controlled than his. I mean, he, he does tell us it's bootleg, so <laughs> right on, brother. I'm not trying to knock you, Jason. I'm just, um, the thing is here, you see all this material? A lot of this is copper, and he even tells us that. And this, I think, is a 100 mesh screen. So a lot of that copper ends up in his um, anode material, which is this right here. So because his electrolysis process is a little bit dirtier than, than what we were running, you can see here he's got an excessive amount of copper sulfate. It's not a circulating bath like we had. Um, the anode appears to be a little bit more dirty than ours was. So there's a lot of stuff just falling off this thing for sure um, as far as copper goes when the anodes that contaminated sometimes huge chunks of copper will fall off from mechanical um, dilapidation so the structural integrity just falls apart so you'll be plating some of that material out and then all of a sudden a huge chunk will just fall off and it'll have a huge amount of copper in it I'm not sure what type of power supply he's using in this video but we were using a uh, very low voltage. You can see here he's running over three volts and that is just way too high. You're gonna be blasting copper off that anode at that rate. Just the structural integrity of the anode face itself begins to deteriorate more rapidly than the copper can be eaten away because of 
the different metals that are present in the anode alloy. So you see Jason was running at, you know, three volts, which is just blazing, blasting voltage. And what that does, you can see our voltage here, we're running 1.2, 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts, usually way under that. Uh, 0.9 volts we're seeing here, 0.6 volts we're running here. Always under a volt in most cases. A lot of the times in these small cells, if you get over 0.5 volts, you start to see detrimental cathode damage. So it's, it's not practical to do it. So what happens is when you're running at these high voltages, like three volts, we've done that too. I've got it in here somewhere. I've done it all. Um, there's a two volt one. What happens is, is huge chunks of copper will fall off of the anode because um, it's just getting eroded away so badly and so quickly that the surface copper doesn't have time to get pulled away um, as much as some of those canals that start burrowing into the metal. Because it's, a, it's not a solid metal, this is what happens. Because this is not solid copper, you can see these little holes and burrows start getting eaten into the metal. That one there is really deep. You can almost stick your hand in there. And it goes back a ways too. So all those little burrowed canals and stuff start to cause a mechanical structural integrity issue, okay? So, Jason, if you want to reduce the amount of copper in your anode sludge, you got to reduce that voltage big time. You never want to go over uh, two volts in a cell as small as what I'm seeing there. It's a very slow, drawn-out process. You can't speed this up. So, oh, better where to go. So there it is. You can see the copper tones to it. So all that copper came from uh, his anode sludge just because he's running a very dirty anode that's got all this stuff in it. And that causes large chunks to fall off as the reaction's going on. Um, let me show you here. He's got a, see how that's all eaten up? Now I want you to imagine that a whole chunk could just fall off of there before the copper was taken out of it all the way because of that canaling that I showed you. Okay, Basil, so if we look at this material here, we see that it's a far different uh, grade altogether. Our electrolysis process was so effective that it didn't allow any of the copper to fall into the anode mud. Almost all of our copper was being plated out onto the cathode because we were running at such a low voltage that the copper had time to be plated out before huge chunks of anode just started falling off into our anode mud reservoir. So that is why he's getting more metal than us. Our electrolysis process is a very controlled and refined setup with uh, perfect voltage, the perfect pH, the perfect temperature, and circulation. We filtered the stuff with a carbon filter. Here's the slag on that run. Pretty glassy stuff. Um, no metal was found in it. This is a really good flux recipe right here. So good, I can't even tell you. I'll have to email it to you. So, Basil, I'm starting to think that maybe we want to talk ourselves out of leaching this anode mud prior to smelting it. Um, we got to pay to to get rid of that leach effluent. Um, we're just making waste for ourselves. What are we gonna do, take the copper out of it and then we still got this uh, material, this toxic uh, material we gotta deal with? Um, I think uh, we should discuss this and decide whether or not we wanna leach the anode mud prior to smelting.